Okay, uh, this is the Chinook activity from the book in SQL Lite using RStudio. So I just kind of want to go over it. <laughs> I already have some stuff saved in here, but I'm going to exit out of it. Um, so I just kind of want to go over it to see if I can help some people out some more. So uh, if you've never used uh, RStudio or SQL Lite or anything like that, um, which I actually hadn't before this class, but um, I somehow magically <laughs> managed to figure it out. So uh, once you have RStudio installed, R and RStudio installed, then you're going to install these two packages. Um, so sometimes when you go and install this, if you have not already done so, when you enter it into your console, which is this right here, and hit enter, mine's gonna show this um, uh, pop-up which says that I've already installed it, so I'm just going to hit no. But if you um, go to install it, make sure you look down here at this red like error field. It may say that you need to also download our tools. So there will be a link in here where you can um, go to the page to download our tools. So you'll need to download our, our studio, our tools. Um, and then it should work. So from there, after you have these two packages installed, you're going to um, make sure you have all of these. I just copy and paste so that it's easier. Um, I have to, for mine, I had issues downloading the database, so I renamed it something a little bit different. So just make sure whatever you named your file for the database matches the name down here or else it won't work. So you see on the side that mine says chinookdb.db. That's the one that works for me. All right, so uh, it should, okay, it's giving me an error message or that's probably because I already installed it earlier. So once you do those commands, um, you can do them line by line, or you can do them, you know, all together like I just did. Uh, you want to make sure that you uh, make sure that everything works. So this connection right here, which is in your environment, make sure that that actually works by doing the list tables function. You know it works when it shows you these, um, all of the, the names of the tables within the database, which are listed here. So. For question number one, um, I'm going to skip this for now because that's more applicable to other questions when you're joining tables. Um, so the hint here is DB, which is database, get query. You're querying that specific database. And then con is going to be that connection, which is up here. So what I do is I just copy and paste it. And then what you're going to want to do after that is quote, select, and then uh, after select is your column name. In this first question, we're not going to be using the column name because we want the whole table. So select and then column name, our placeholder is going to be an asterisk. And then from, the next thing after from is the name of the table, which will be track in this instance. And then um, if you want to see the table itself, you can stop there, close parentheses, hit enter, and it's going to show you the table in your console. A little bit easier way to view it is if you take that same command and you assign it up in the environment. So in order to assign it in the environment, you're going to say name the table, whatever you want to name it, you can name it track, you can name it T, you can name it song names or something, whatever you feel like naming it, because it's for you to look at more easily. And then you're going to do like an, a little arrow looking sign, and then you're going to do that same command. So you're going to be, do db get query con uh, comma space, and then you're going to do the select function. If I can spell, you're going to do your placeholder, and then you're going to do from, 
and then the name of the table. When you hit enter, it goes up here in your environment. You're going to hit that and it's going to show you. See, look how much easier that is to look at. So then um, what we need for this question, because it's asking to sort by length, we need to know the name of the column for length. So in this case, it is milliseconds, which I can easily just sort like that. <laughs> or you can take the same command, the db get query con, and then we're going to add to it. So uh, after you have inserted the name of the table that you want, we're going to um, order by, and then the column, which is milliseconds. And then how do you want to sort it? So we're just going to say descending in this case. Then I will hit enter, and then that should show us the table. And then um, I will go back up. And like I said, I just like to copy and paste things because that's just who I am. <laughs> so I just copy it because I don't want to type it out all the way. And then I'm going to assign it Q1. And I'm going to hit make that little arrow sign again, paste that in there, hit enter, and now it is assigned right here. So when I click on it, it'll show um, that it'll show that file, and then it shows it sorted by milliseconds. So you can see that it's sorted by milliseconds. All right, so that one's pretty easy. So the next question gets a little more complicated because we want to display the customer ID and the total amount of customers, um, the total amount the customer has spent for customers that have spent over $40. So for this one, we're going to need uh, to find out which table the customer ID is. And in order to do that, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to guess, um, customer or invoice, right? So it's going to be invoice because that's got the total, um, like billing information. As you can see in this field here, we don't have any, um, any like billing, anything that tells us how much the customer spent. So we're going to need to use the invoice table on this question. So all of the questions, um, all of the code for these questions have started off the same for me. So it's going to be um, DB get query con, and then it'll start with select. And then after select, we want, what are we displaying here? So the columns of customer ID and the total, right? So those are going to be the two columns that we're going to need to put um, after select. So we're going to go customer ID and comma total. So you don't want to put and because that's a different function. You're going to put a comma in between the two columns. After that, it's coming from which table? Invoice. So... Um, and then just for purposes here, I'm going to just cut that and save it on my clipboard. Um, so let's look at the invoice table, right? So we're going to do, um, the DB get query. <laughs> and then come on comma space. All right. And so we're going to select from 
and then our table is invoice. Um, I'm going to assign an invoice here because it's just a little bit easier to look at. So, all right, so we have, we know that customer ID right there and then total right there. So we know like if we sort this by customer ID, we know that the customer number, customer ID number one has made multiple purchases. So what we're trying to find out is if the total of all these purchases equals 40 or more dollars, right? So after that, um, we're going to, my answer's over here. <laughs> It's gonna make sense in a second. Okay, so what I did here, we need the sum, right, of the total. So what I did here was sum, because you have to have, for some reason it works if you have the sum or count function before the from, um, at least that's what I've seen in all of the coding that I've been looking up. Uh, so we have the sum of the total from the table of invoice. And then after that, we're going to um, group by because, so this isn't going to work if you don't group it, right? So if you're not going to group it, it's not going to know like that you're grouping customer ID, right? So it's gonna just try and sum up everything all into one and then it's it's gonna be confused. So we're grouping by customer ID and that has to go before the next um, sum function. Um, so it's like you're grouping it together and then you're adding it. So if it makes sense, it's it's like an order of operations basically. So we're grouping by customer ID and then the where function doesn't work here. I wish I had a better explanation, but I all I know is if where doesn't work, I try having. So having is the next um, the next command that I give it here, and then we need to do sum again. So we're summing up the total amount of their orders, and then we want it to be greater than 40. So I have greater than and then 40 at the end. And so we run that. And it gives us a nice little table here with all of the um, customer IDs and those that have spent over $40 and what that amount is. So now we're going to assign that Q2. So I'm going to go Q2 and then I just paste it because I'm lazy. <laughs> and then that will show up up here and it's so much easier to look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there for now and hope that explanation has kind of helped push you in the right direction. Um, I can try and help with other questions for other assignments, but um, for the other questions, uh, but just know that unfortunately, I don't know why, for example, like why having works over where, so. I'll do the best I can if you have any questions.